Hello everyone, this is Mark D. Russian. I'm gonna run through a quick tutorial on how to data bind a list of items in a view model to an MVC4 view uh, using just the built-in attributes of MVC. All right, let's get to it. Let's load up Visual Studio 2012 Express. We're gonna create a new project, just an MVC4 web application. Uh, it'll be an internet application, Razor View Engine. All the defaults are fine. This will create a basic application for us to work with. Let's go ahead and run it just to uh, sanity check and make sure we're okay. All right, looks like it loads up. All the stuff's clicking correctly. Well, let's get going. First thing we're going to want to do is create our model. So let's add a new class. This class is going to be the student models class. I'm gonna add a couple little attributes to this. Uh, first name and the last name. And, and an email address. For the list of objects that I want linked in this student model, I'm gonna create a school organization class. So this student, uh, for instance, is going to be involved in multiple organizations in school and you wanna be able to show all the organizations and then toggle them on or off based on what the student is uh, involved in. So the school organization class is going to have a name and a Boolean to say if the student is involved or not in this organization. Just to complete it, we're going to add some attributes to those variables and we're done. In an industry ready application, you're going to have a uh, interface to interact with your database. It's gonna be a repository of some kind where you're storing this persistent data. Behind the scenes, you'd have a student table and you'd have a school organization table, and then you'd have a link table that linked them together. But for your models, you want to abstract all of that into something that is easily uh, used by the views. Let's head over to the home controller and let's add the student information uh, action result to the home controller. That's going to return the student information view, which we will create in the future. Um, and like I said, we're going to just populate a student, new student model with a bunch of default information. Um, as you can see, the student's name is Bob Smith, bob at fake.com. And then the student organizations are all uh, hard coded for our demo. Let's head on over to the views and create a new view in our home folder. Name this student information. We're going to strongly type this view with our student class. So pick the student model class from the dropdown and the scaffold template is going to be edit. So it'll add some of the editing fields for us and we should be good to go. This creates a basic view that we can use and uh, let's go ahead and run this thing and see what we have so far. All right, looks like we have a basic editing page, first name, last name, and email address text box. Uh, as you can see, the list of items is nowhere to be found for our organizations. So that's what we want to add, and that's what we're gonna go do now. All right, first thing we need to do is add a couple div tags, then add our table. Let's add our headers for the organization name and the checkbox, which is going to be whether or not this student is involved in that uh, organization. All right, now what we have to do to get all of those items that are in that organization list, what we'll need to do is manually loop through that list in our model and then display those results and bind those attributes to our view. So let's go ahead and just do a simple for loop. Taking the count from the length of that list. And for each of those items, what we'll need to do is we'll need to bind the name portion to a hidden variable that doesn't change. And then we'll have to bind the is involved portion to a checkbox. So first we'll use the HTML helpers in Razor to create a hidden. Then we'll create a row and we'll use the 
HTML helper display four to grab the name from that organization. And then we'll use the HTML helper checkbox to grab the is involved Boolean variable. And what this does is it binds those individual HTML elements to those variables. All right, this looks pretty good. Let's run it and see what we have. Great, now as you can see, the organizations are all displayed and the checkboxes are checked for the ones that this student is involved in. Now let's head back and what we're going to need to do now is create an HTTP post element so we can pull the changes from that view and then update our database or whatever our persistent data storage model is. So let's go ahead and create an HTTP post for the same name student information. And using MVC, we can just pull that student model right out of that callback. Let's just return any view. What I'm gonna do is just create some debug right line uh, so we can get a little bit of output so we can see if that student, if the changes to that student model were actually persisted through into something that we can use to update the database. That looks good. I'm going to throw a breakpoint in here so it'll stop and let's go ahead and debug this thing. Let's make a couple changes here. Let's uh, call this Bob the Jerk and Bob the Jerk only plays football apparently. Click save. What the save does is it goes back to that post element and as you can see the name from that model is now Bob the Jerk and he only plays football. If you have any feedback or suggestions, go ahead and email me at mark at and I'd be happy to do a chat with you. All right, thanks a lot.